Okay, so hello, good morning, good afternoon. I'm going to be the conductor today. Uh, and well, we're going to have someone, I think, with a lot of experience. Because even though he's young, he has already been in very different domains doing very different things. I met him as Director General of Family Development at the region of Buenos Aires in Argentina. But I know that he has been involved also in civil society activism in different ways. He is also a teacher. So, and well, and I can tell you, when I was last time I was in Buenos Aires, he organized a very, very good meeting with members of parliament, right? And, and with other kinds of people. Too. So anyway, I'll let him talk for about 12, 15 minutes, and then maybe we can continue this conversation. Fernando, please. Good evening, everyone. Uh, before I start, I would like to thank Ignacio Socias and all the people of International Federation for Family Development to give me the opportunity to be here today. So I'm going to talk uh, about a few things that I have discovered these last few years, uh, which I think you will find useful. I know that many of you here are, are students with a future ahead, and it seems like yesterday um, that I was sitting right there where you are now as a student. And in fact, I feel that it will be more appropriate for me to be sitting and learning next to you than talking here today. But anyway, like I said, that I try to share in the most short way possible something that I have discovered these last years, especially on my journey at Family Development Department at Buenos Aires City. Please, if you don't understand what I'm saying, please let me know because my English is not very good, uh, but I will try to do my best. So I'm going to divide my speech in three items. First, I'm going to share you what I found out about the different type of achievements that we try to pursue in life and which ones are worthy. The second point uh, is about uh, what I found out about the importance of the family to left behind nowadays. And at least very briefly, I will tell about the way we work with the families. So the first things coming to my mind when I think about all what happened last few years is a question. What I have achieved? It is a question that I usually ask in, is usually asked in a, in a shop interview or the first things I want to answer when I have to talk about this experience. But I thought a lot about this, a lot about this. And I may have accomplished a few things, but I realized that it's more important to ask myself what is a real achievement for me. I believe the, that the greatest achievement to which we can aspire to is not the outside of us, but inside us. And it took me a long time to learn it. Usually our ambitions are delimited by what our society expects of us. Become, become a CEO, uh, fund a business, do something, something memorable or carry out a successful project, you know, et cetera. I used to think in that way, but let me tell you that none of this will be a truly success by itself. The truly success is inside us. It's about our convictions. To be faithful to the truth that our heart reveals us. Only in this way, by keeping that uh, internal compass pointing north, we'll be able we will be able to do the to do good to the society and the people that surround us. The rest will come then, will come later. So if we 
think that priorities, I think we run a serious, serious risk uh, of forgetting our, our convictions or changing them at the first opportunity. So I think many of you here might be politics, law, international relations, students. And I bet you choose these careers because of a strong vocation of service. We choose to put others in front of our needs. And that is an act of love, or at least it's it what motivated me to follow this path. So alongside my journey, I discovered a great truth. And this is uh, my second point of my talk. A truth to which I try to stay faithful. And that finding, I believe, is my greatest achievement in recent years. That truth is related to what the Nobel Prize in Economics, Shane Heckman, said. And I'm going to share my screen. Nobody wants to talk about the family. And the family is the whole story. And it is the whole story about a lot of social and economic issues. So if we do a poll in any part of the world and ask the people if they consider the family as important, more than 90% of the answer would probably be that it is. And if we gave them uh, a rating scale, most of them will rank the family as a very important thing. Nevertheless, if they are asked about <clears throat> their urgent problems, probably their answer will be related to their health, their economics, education, <clears throat> security, work, uh, free time, and barely see the family as a problem, as an, as an issue to attend. <clears throat> I'm sorry. So, this is what happened when we did this investigation in Buenos Aires. And I bet that we would get the same results in another place. When I started working in the family development department, probably I would have ans I answered the same way. The family seemed something important to, important to me, but I didn't know really why. All those years working with the family, they showed me this truth that made me change my mind. Now I will proceed to show you in a graphic and in a very simple way what I have discovered. So it's a very simple way. Eh? Uh, I'm sure everyone recognized this catastrophe. The thinking of the Titanic, for example, the Chernobyl event, and the recent explosion in Beirut. Anyway, do you know what these events have in common? They have one thing in common. They could be avoided. But the warnings were not taken into consideration. These misfortunes could be avoided, and due to negligence, it didn't happen. And in my, my opinion, there are worse catastrophes than those where lives are lost. I'm talking about those where people can't even lie, or can't truly lie. And I'm going to give you an example. In our society, we frequently see in front of us a lot of those catastrophes. Drugs, addictions, alcoholism, depression, suicide, violence, crime, delinquency, poverty. A society that disappears because of the low birth rates. And all of these are catastrophes that can mostly be prevented. 
how working with the roots with and for the families. The family is the most important the most important and strategic actor in development. Nowadays we are shutting it down. We can see the, the signs that warning us. And we observe terrify how a full approach of the problem is being neglected. Working with emotions, bondings, communication, share time between fathers and sons, and um, quality of time, with violence on educative environment, and economic health, for example, are very important items to consider on these days. It's worrying the lack of policies about these topics, at least here in Argentina. So, in the family development department, we try to do some of those things. Of those things, we have a team of family counseling. We name here orientadores familiares. I don't know how is the correct translation. Uh, we did workshops in many schools uh, here in the city. Uh, we develop develop a program brought from the United States Nations of Office of Drug and Crime named Strongest Families. We have an investigation area where a lot of information about families was collected and put together and used for research. When we are also we has worked in creation of an organization net that work along with the families. Uh, we carry out international congresses, forums, symposia about family policies, among other things. But I could be talking a, a lot of time about what I what we had doing we had we did in in the direction, but I want to focus on one aspect of the way of working. In, world, in which I consider most important and the spine of our work, the one related with emotions and bondings. Working with emotions, communications, bonding is essential for the healthy growth of a person. It affects his self-esteem, self the way he stands in front of the world, his project of life, his relationship with the society. If, if you never receive love, very hardly you will learn to love. Or with this, I can have proved to be to prevent antisocial and self-destructive behaviors, as the one we saw in pictures a few minutes ago. So now I'd like to share you some pictures that show the work we have done. And I like very much these photos because they are very casual, very natural. Uh, this is a, a work with the families in emotions. He's a, a meeting with the fathers when in a program we are next to start. It's a, an event that we work in the promotions of emotion and bonding uh, through, through different games. And this is an event where, where we recognize the compromise of the families who uh, work in, along us. And I like very much this picture because it's ca that chaotic and relaxed moment, I think it's same that the moment we need to live in the family. No? It's, uh, it's like the family has to be uh, showing us and chaotic no? in the same way. And I think this represents that, that concept. So 
this is a work in the strongest in the strongest family program. Uh, this is the stage of family counseling with volunteers and uh, people who work in this a working with a workshop with uh, bondings about bondings and a workshop in, in the school with the with the boys the child so okay i think this change we saw on kids the change we saw we saw on kids and families were so touching and reaffirmed those things that we only knew theoretically, no. And I think what what encourages me the most is having the certainty we change we change family's life through this work you can see here. And this is just one dimension that working with the families includes. For example, nowadays a population winter affects Europe that slowly it's affecting our continent and, and bring us a few problems like economical, social, and cultural that we will see in coming years. Politicians prefer to deal with problems that affect the, no one here, at least here in Argentina. They only pay attention on, on what gives them more votes. They choose to turn a blind eye to the warnings and alerts that talk about the real problems. So practically, there are many things still to do. I think today, more than ever, we need a real statesman, politics, academics, and leaders that make themselves help and think about the future. These people need to be faithful to the truth, to their convictions, with an authentic uh, vocation of service, that for the love of others, dedicate their life to save that future that is coming. Dedicate their life to work for and with the families. And I invite you to be those people winning. So thank you, Ignacio. Thank you very much, uh, Fernando. I hope uh, you can. I hope you can understand what I'm saying because my my speak my English speak is not very good. So. Well, I think it's more than good, and at the same time, you see, I I certainly had no problem because my even if you may have a slight. The Spanish accent. Spanish is my language, so no problem. No, seriously. Now I think <laughs> I think it's very interesting to to listen. I was while people think of questions, and if you want, you can write them on the chat box, or just turn on your camera if you want to participate more directly. Um, this. This uh, distinction you made for bonding between emotions and commitment, I think it's very important. But something I always wonder is how can we teach people to combine both? Because emotions are very important, but they are also short in time. Commitment is usually what makes people stay. You have some idea that can help us about this? It's a good question. Uh, it's difficult. I, I want to, when, when we talk about emotions, we, the people, it's, it's difficult to make understand the people, the, the value of commitment. But because it's a low compromise to 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 uh, say to uh, com a low compromise, it, it can understand the the impact 
the, the emotions had in the life of, of the persons. No? Um, I think I think it's important to to form the to form with with this both uh, dimensions to the person, but I think it's very it's a desafio. How can I say it? desafio? Uh, it's an, a challenge. It's very important. It's to, a challenge. A challenge. A challenge. It's a challenge. A challenge to to make people to uh, to make understand the importance of the of the emotions of the bonding in the develop of a person now and make them understand this i think the compromise we can because uh, it's very uh, is it's very you know uh, visible it's, if you if you understand that i think it's a uh, cause and consequences now i don't know if i i I can I answer your question, but yes, you did, you did because, uh, because I, and I I totally agree with what you said. Yeah, right. Remy from France, he says great ideas on fathers and bonding. Can you develop on what you found out about fathers' authority? What is the good equilibrium, the good balance? Between okay, I think it is one word, is and it is the love, the love. No, it's, it's, I don't, the father ha, haven't be ha, can, can be more strict, but uh, they can is uh, not strict, uh, not uh, not uh, relaxed. No, I I think the the love is which uh, point which point the 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 way i i think no with responsibility uh, ever if, if the father have ever the in the in your see the in your mind the the future of the of the boy um no he he was going to able to he will be able to point limits the father have to point limits but not in the in the authority way but in the not even the rational way what wanting to make understand the boy what uh, he what is the, the only the good for him because when i there are fathers with the boys with i think father with Three years old boys, four years old uh, child that want to make understand because why uh, why them don't allow to make something to the boy and the boy don't won't be understand at this age. So I think <clears throat> it's not uh, we have to respect the the development of the boy and his age. No, and always our compass had to be the lab. Understand what is the lab? No, because I, there are some people, there are some fathers who think that the lab is allow all what the boys want to, do. and it's not the way. No? because the boys need limits, need limits to. To he needs to to uh, to learn the that in the life are limits. No, I, single mothers. Do you have any experience for this? Well, we had a lot of experience with single mothers here in, there in Buenos Aires, and it's it's a complex reality. I think the, the state had to ha have a need a, a most uh, deeply, I think, more integral view on his politics. No, 
uh, the majority of the politics of the government that is here is focused on the individual and not in the family, you know? Taking the family, taking that reality, you know, helping as mothers to go ahead and, um, to, to develop, uh, I think is uh, one thing we can, we can help that mothers uh, with economical policies, with uh, policies who have to be with the, the time the, the time in the work for example the, the flexible i don't know how to say the flexible time of the work you know, helping them to 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 be more time with the with the child etc et i think there's a lot of policies that the state can from the state can be doing for help the single mothers and today uh, here is we see a lack of the, that policies. Okay, okay. Dennis, I had some problem with the driving in the car. Okay. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to ask uh, Fernando, so how big is Buenos Aires? Because I think it's a very big. Is it very big city or? It's, it's a very big city, and there, there are more or less <clears throat> four and a half million people. Mm -hmm. And and. Uh, what do you think is at the moment the biggest challenge in uh, in uh, in terms of uh, city uh, city um, uh, habitats, but also in terms of Argentina for the family generally? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Maybe this question was asked because I wasn't there for five minutes. But what is the biggest challenge in in Argentina in terms of family? There are too many challenges here in Argentina, but. I think the first, the, the, the most important had to be with the poverty, and with the poverty families, uh, <clears throat> helping develop the development, helping and get out of the poverty, of the indigency, you know? I think it's the most urgent problem here uh, because of, of the economical crisis, because of, of we have a little, a, a, like a 40% Poverty, um, how affect the poverty? The it, about it's a poor, it's a recent poverty. You no, know? it's a lot of people who came into poverty these last few years. So it's not a, a permanent poverty. So how how I think the the most important is things how we can help this family to get out of this poverty. It has more to do with the economic, the community situation, but uh, how we can uh, get, get them more uh, net to, to motivate this, uh, this crisis. No? I, like, uh, I like very much a video, uh, and Spanish video, which I don't know who who make them, but who talk about the the importance of the of the family net, no, for amortize the, the impact of the poverty. Okay. And I think that I image I'm, 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 uh, in that that photo in my head. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Fernando. Uh, I will be fast. Uh, well, I got that so the main problem probably is poverty there, but uh, um, is it work also a problem for families uh, for educating their children or not? <laughs> yeah, it's a very big problem because more than, not, more than never now with this quarantine, uh, the the child had to uh, assist to the class to the school by digital ways no? by zoom by uh, from his house and here in Argentina I have a great uh, the people ha haven't had internet connection the more of 
more, more, most of them, most of the people, the poor people, uh, have haven't had this connection. So a lot of this child, I have, I am professor, uh, I am a teacher too, and I live that situation because my students are from a low, a low, very poverty, so poorly. So. Uh, this is a, a great, a great challenge to the future because the, the pandemic uh, is an obstacle to, to learn from this, from this child. Okay. okay thank you, thank you very much. We have run out out of time, really. So I just want to thank once more Fernando. It's been really interesting, and all of you for coming here. And just to remind you, any suggestion you have or any idea for future talks, please let us know. Thank you very much and hope to see you soon. Bye. Thank you, Fernando. Thank you, Ignacio. Bye-bye. Thank you, Ignacio Adams and everyone. And by the way, today is Fernando's birthday. So maybe we could, we could finish 